I'm Russ Kicklin. and on this episode of American Reef, we're going to be talking sea swirls. So why are we even talking about the sea swirl? Well, it really, it's kind of simple. The last few episodes that I've released, right, it has been with Mike Paletta on that sunlit tank where he's redoing his tank circulation to kind of solve some issues that he's been having. And it reminded me, I've got to start back up on that 110-gallon tank tank project where I started it to because I wanted to change the circulation in there. So again, those videos kind of reminded me to, to actually get back on it, so to speak. Now, as most of you know, I'm a real big fan of kind of like the Tunzi products as well as the Aquarium Current products, the maker of uh, Sea Sweeps, Sea Swirl, those kind of products. And uh, it occurred to me that even though we kind of showed the, uh, the Sea Swirl um, being installed on the Paletta tank, we didn't kind of go over the mounting options, etc. And I thought that, you know, there'd be some value there in trying to like to discuss those a bit. So what I did is I went back to the Reef Tutor archives and I actually found a, a video where Gary and I had actually talked about circulation flow and as well as kind of the benefits of the C-sweep and kind of the mounting options. And again, I looked at that and thought that that provide a lot of value, especially to the new hobbyists who maybe haven't seen or even thought about this before. So that's what we're going to show today, like an episode from those archives. Just a reminder, if you are new to reef keeping, you can check out my other 250-ish kind of videos that exist out there, and there's just tons of information there. Um, I've got a few on YouTube. Most of them will say, or a majority of them are on kind of iTunes, right, as far as podcasts, as, and you can use, uh, again, your podcast app to access that for your iOS device, uh, or you can use Pocket Cast if you're on uh, Android. Um, and from there, uh, you'll find out that you'll find probably 50-ish episodes per season there. If you want to check out, again, the other kind of 100 and change, uh, what you'll see is my Reef Tutor video series basically has three seasons. We are in season four now. Um, and seasons one, two, and three are archived. To get to those, you'll have to go to AmericanReef.com and subscribe to the Reef Tutor channel there. Uh, again, it, it, what those series are from an archiving perspective has been years of going kind of behind the scenes at like zoos to kind of local fish stores, how they order coral, how they, you know, pick up coral, you know, those kind of things as far as, so it's a different perspective on kind of coral, saltwater tanks and maintaining systems. And again, not very valuable, at least in my opinion. As well, if you're looking for one of the best fish foods on the planet, check out my American Reefs HPD. Again, you can go to AmericanReef.com. Bottom center of the page, you'll see a link there that says, click here to order HPD. With that said, let's bring up that video now on the sea swirls. Gary, what are we doing today, man? Well, today we're doing a product showcase from a company called Aquarium Currents. They've developed a product called the Sea Swirl. And what the Sea Swirl does for your reef tank is gives it alternating currents. So why don't we show the Sea Swirl and show some of the uh, advances that they've made with hooking it up and how it works. Sounds like a plan. Okay, Gary, so how are we gonna go about demonstrating this product? All right, well, first I want to just show how the piece of equipment is packaged up, yep. how it would come to you. And then what I'm gonna do is show you it in action in a few different environments. First, we're gonna show it on a demonstration tank here. Yep. What we're using is some Calerpa to show the effect of the flow. And the Calerpa is gonna kind of represent a coral. Right. Then we're actually gonna hook up a half inch sea swirl on one of my small reef tanks and show the effect it has on live coral. So first, let's unbox one of the sea swirls, show the viewer how it's boxed up, how it's packaged, and how it would arrive to you. This is typically how the sea swirls are shipped. 
what we're opening up is their most popular size, and that would be the three-quarter inch sea squirrel. Each sea squirrel comes with the directions, um, everything that you would need to help you install the sea squirrel. Okay. All right. And also, it's wrapped in bubble wrap that protects it in shipping. I've shipped many, many, many of these, and even UPS or FedEx can't break them. <laughs> so what it comes with would be your nozzle, your barb fitting, and your unit itself. Now, what's important to understand about, especially this bar, if you want to install your sea swirl with hard pipe, instead of using the barb fitting, you can use a piece of PVC male adapter that threads into the three quarter inch 90 degree elbow to hard pipe it in. So either application will work, either using flexible hose or hard pipe. You know what, uh, before we go, well, I should say before, but in addition to, why don't you kind of review the pieces and the parts, how that sea swirl actually works. Where does water come into, where does it come out? Of? Okay, so what we have, like I said, a three quarter inch sea swirl. Yeah. And one thing that I like about the sea swirl is the amount of cord they give you. You know, a lot of pieces of equipment you get have a cord that's way too short and you have to run an extension cord. Sure, sure. And I hate extension cords. So you have plenty of cord here to get to your outlet. So we have the three quarter inch sea swirl itself. We have the three quarter inch bar okay. that accepts vinyl hose. So that's where water comes into. Water the... would go in. That's the intake. Okay. Okay. And then if I flip it over, the sea swirl comes with the mounting bracket to mount it on a glass aquarium. Okay. Now, if you don't have a glass aquarium, we'll get into some of the other features that Aquarium Currents offers. Okay. Now, last but not least would be the nozzle. This is where the water is going to come out. Okay. And that nozzle is adjustable, so you can actually manipulate where you want the flow. And there's color coding on here, so it's easy to line up and get that swirl that you're looking for. Basically, it, it moves 360 degrees, 180, 180. It doesn't go all the way around. If you put it in a corner of an aquarium, it's gonna go from corner to corner and back. Now the last feature, typically on a sea swirl, would be the adjustable nozzle. What we have is Lockline, which is a product that you can buy from Aquarium Currents, or you can purchase it throughout the internet. And what's nice about Lockline is you can add more pieces, you can make a Y here, you can manipulate that return however you want. Now, it's adjustable, so if you wanna hit the coral lower in your aquarium, you can point the nozzle down. If you want to ripple the surface of the water, you can adjust it so it accomplishes that. It really is what you desire as far as your flow. Interesting, you had just mentioned flow. Talk to me, why is, it, why is it important? Well, flow is critical for the health of your aquarium mm -hmm. and your inhabitants. What's critical about it is the fact that the flow is what carries the nutrients to your coral. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, you get the effect of the flow washing away the detritus off of the corals too. So you're feeding them and you're also cleansing them. That is critical to accomplish that with flow in your aquarium. Sure. And I guess like everything else, there is good flow and bad flow, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's up to you to determine the amount of flow that's appropriate for that type of coral. Mm -hmm. Flow can be too aggressive too, if it's actually tearing the tissue of the coral or not allowing the coral to open up. So that's why it's important to have a valve or some control mechanism to adjust that flow. And when I do my demonstration on my small reef tank, we'll show that. Now, Aquarium Currents provides a few different ways to mount the sea swirl on your aquarium. What I like to do is mount the, aquarium, the, the sea swirl on the front of the aquarium blowing on your reef. Typically in the past, a lot of hobbyists mounted the sea swirl on the back of their aquarium, and that was okay, but it's blowing above your reef and hitting the front of the glass. So the idea is to mount it on the front of the aquarium and hit your corals directly. So they provide some different brackets, and we'll get into that a little bit in a second. But first, the bracket that typically comes with it 
is the uh, mounting bracket that looks like this, okay? And this bracket allows you to simply mount it on your aquarium. There's no, you know, uh, complicated installation. And I'll demonstrate basically how okay. simple it is to sure. install it like this. Now, obviously, the way it's mounted like this, it doesn't usually fit perfectly on the front of the aquarium because it sticks out a little bit like that. So if you want to mount it on the side or you want to mount it in the back, this would be the bracket that would work very well. So there's two set screws here that are made out of plastic so they won't be corroded by the salt water. And basically, it's nothing more than tightening them down and then you have your sea swirl mounted. Okay, and what I'm gonna do next would be remove that bracket and show a new bracket that they came out with that allows you to mount it in the front without the back end sticking over the end. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove this bracket so we can install the corner mounting bracket. And it's nothing more than removing these four screws to eliminate this bracket. So let's take the time and remove these four screws. So while you're removing those screws, sure. let me ask you a couple questions. Yep. Uh, first of all, flow, uh -huh. right? Um, what's good flow, what's bad flow? Well, the alternation of the flow is what this product is so good at accomplishing. Flow is excellent, but you don't want too much flow continually on a coral. And when we demonstrate on my small reef tank, you, you'll really get a good idea of what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. that unidirectional flow. Unidirectional flow means that it's only flowing in one place all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you kind of eliminate a lot of corals that would be appropriate in that spot. You have to bounce it then to other areas, but now you have usually an ideal spot in your aquarium that most corals don't do well in sure. because it's too much flow in that particular area. Where the sea swirl, allows you to spread that flow around. Okay. And you know, and I have to emphasize you're spreading it around affordably. There's there's other products out there that kind of accomplish the same thing, but there's a lot of cons with that and most of it is price. Sure. So uh, another thing here or a question would be, you know, I, I know with par heads, um, again, you, you kind of distribute bounce and all that stuff like you said. Um, uh, but, you know, I know with par heads you have a certain amount of maintenance right, that you have to perform mm -hmm. because of it's sitting in the salt water. Absolutely, that's a good point. Whenever you expose any piece of equipment inside your aquarium or inside your sump, it's going to be exposed to all the corrosive things that come with a reef tank. Mm -hmm. Where the sea swirl, the only thing that's exposed to the water would be this nozzle. You can't hurt this nozzle. So if it grows algae on it or it gets dirty, all you have to do is remove the nozzle and clean that. The unit itself is not in the water. The unit itself is above the aquarium and it's protected by either the mounting plate or just the fact that it's not in the water. If you don't have any splash, you'll get very little salt on the unit itself. Uh, you know, basically it's never going to be uh, damaged by sure. the aquarium itself. Sure like the power heads are. Sure, sure. So maintenance is a lot better than that. There's really very little maintenance, if any, other than the nozzle itself. And most of the time, if you have a healthy reef tank, it's gonna grow coralline algae on it, and when it does that, that looks pretty good. Sure. And it kind of blends in with the rest of the aquarium. Okay. So now the brackets are removed. So what Ed over Aquarium Currents made was a very simple bracket. And this bracket is nothing more than a seat to hold the sea swirl over the aquarium so the back end doesn't stick out. So what I'm gonna do is install the bracket. It's similar to the set screws that come with the other bracket, except we're going to use the frame of the aquarium to hold this bracket stable. Okay. So let's install that very simply. So the mounting bracket is installed and you can position it how you want in whatever corner you want. But this is a basic idea. You know, it, it comes with uh, the paper on the acrylic. Basically, that side would be facing up 
and remove the paper before you install it. What I'm going to do is show you how comfortably and how perfectly that unit fits onto that bracket. And now that's also another uh, way to protect the unit from you know, splash or salt creep or anything like that. The only thing that is open would be the hole to put the adjustable nozzle on, right? Yep. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hook up a small pump and get uh, the flow going through the unit so we can kind of demonstrate how it affects this uh, ball of Calerpa here. All right, now what I want to do is demonstrate the effect of the flow from the sea swirl, how it oscillates on a, a colony of Calerpa here. And what you'll see is the uh, eff same effect that it would have on live coral, which we're also going to show. Now this is a three-quarter inch unit. The three-quarter inch unit, you can run about 850 gallons per hour. You can push it a little more, but Aquarium Currents recommends 850. Now they also make two other sizes. They make a half inch and a one inch. The three quarters is probably the most popular size. It's kind of in the middle. The half inch unit, which we're going to use on the live coral, that unit can handle 550 to 650. Aquarium Currents recommends 550. Last, they have the one inch unit. The one inch unit is going to be more volume it's about 1150, but you can also push that a little bit, but you're taking a risk in possibly leaking on the inside of the unit. So that's why you want to try to follow those guidelines. Now, as you can see, the Calerp is kind of resting right now. As the nozzle hits it, you'll see it stimulate that colony of uh, macroalgae. Now, remember, you also can man manipulate the flow with the type of nozzles that you put on here. The, the, the more restrictive, the more pressure you're gonna have. You're gonna increase the velocity by using a, a smaller nozzle on the end there. And that can all be uh, done with the different types of lock line nozzles. Aquarium Currents has them, go on their website, check out all the different types of nozzles that you can put on the end of whatever sea swirl you have. You can increase or decrease the amount of velocity by changing the size of the nozzle. What are we doing now, Bob? Okay, so a lot of viewers, they have an acrylic tank. Sure. So this isn't gonna work, either the corner mounting bracket or the bracket that comes with the unit. So Aquarium Currents has another bracket, and that would be the acrylic bracket. It comes with or it can be purchased for either size you buy, either the half, the three quarter, or the one inch. Same type of routine, you wanna remove these brackets, utilize these four screws, and you'll mount the unit to the acrylic bracket, and then in turn, mount it to your acrylic aquarium. It's another very easy process to mount that bracket to your acrylic tank. So okay. that's your different types of options as far as getting it installed on your aquarium. Whatever type of aquarium you have, Aquarium Currents has a bracket to get it installed. Okay, cool. So let's go see the one on the, uh, the mini reef. the product why don't we see it in action so what we have here is a 40 long this is one of my small reef tanks here at the shop and what I want to demonstrate here is the difference between using a sea swirl as opposed to using like here a, a small power head now what effect we're having by using a one directional flow is clearly you can see on this pipe organ coral and this daisy polyp, it's getting flow. It's getting the sweeping action, but it's getting that one directional flow. It's not giving either one of these corals any time to settle down, to rest, 
and photosynthesize to be able to collect the light by opening up. And that's gonna slow growth down very, very much. I mean, these corals are gonna have a difficult time growing when they're not being allowed to rest and, you know, let the light hit their polyps. Now, just for my sake here, what kind of power head is that? Okay, right there's a small Coralia power head. And Coralia power heads are very good power heads. They're inexpensive, however, they're one directional. They have no sweeping action other than in one direction. With the addition of a sea swirl on this tank, it's gonna allow those corals to rest and open up. Okay, so let's kind of go through that process. All right, let's hook one up and see the difference. Now we have our sea swirl installed. This is a half inch sea swirl on a small 40 long. And what we're doing is demonstrating the effect on these same two corals. Before I had a half inch return and a Coralia powerhead blowing in one direction. Well, now we're using the unidirectional flow. We have the half inch sea swirl hitting that pipe organ and this daisy polyp, but after it's sweeping them, they'll have time to rest and get the light that they need. So it covers two areas. It sweeps them, gets rid of detritus, and it also brings them food. And that's really important with your corals. You don't wanna pound them constantly. You, they need that rest. So right now the sea swirl's in a different direction. Those corals are being able to rest. And a few seconds, the swirl will be back and hitting the pipe organ and the daisy and the rest of the corals in there too. But those two corals are a perfect example um, of the unidirectional flow. Yeah, and you can see how slow that, that head's turning, right? Which it's the right speed. And you know, with any pump, any situation you're providing flow to your system, you need to be able to control that flow. So this of course has a valve on it and I can increase or decrease the flow as needed. This is a 40 gallon long. I don't need that much flow in here. That one sweeping effect from this half inch sea swirl would be the right amount of flow for this aquarium. I don't need any power heads in there. I don't need any other flow. That half inch sea swirl would do everything I need for this small aquarium. So it would eliminate a lot of other gadgets. So to wrap this thing up, let's kind of summarize three key points that I heard Gary make. The first one, which is probably most important, is the fact that corals need to rest to photosynthesize and basically to provide kind of optimal growth. Now again, we know that there are many other factors that will provide optimal growth, but rest kind of has to be in that formula that we provide the rest for those corals so again, they can feed themselves and grow. Um, again, when you have that kind of linear flow on it, you never get that rest. Now, the second item is the fact that when you kind of have those fixed power heads, the other piece you have to worry about is the placement of the coral, meaning you uh, limit or minimize the places where you can put coral because when you have a strong stream flowing, there's only certain corals that will basically be able to survive well with a strong current and then basically underneath kind of that power head for example where there's not so much current there's only certain curl corals that will survive there as well so by kind of having that fixed power head you're going to have to deal with that whereas when you have kind of that oscillating current it will distribute that flow a little bit better and then lastly the thing that I heard and this one was a little more subtle was the fact that um, with these sea swirls what you can do is you can actually take and free up some real estate in the tank, meaning instead of having the power heads in your tank, 
right, what you can do is basically move those power heads up and out, so to speak, by placing on top of the tank one of those sea swirls. And then the only thing that you have coming down is basically that little nozzle. So again, you're moving the real estate from the tank into kind of the hood, which is giving you more of kind of a uh, less cluttered tank, so to speak. And again, like I said, that one was kind of more subtle. That, that wasn't direct, but that was kind of the takeaway that I've got out of that video. Right. Um, now, one of the things that he, that he didn't say in there as well was the fact, and we saw this with Paletta's tank, basically you kind of have a back siphon effect that occurs where if you have that supply pump in your sump, what will happen if the power goes is it's going to take water down in there. Now, we saw how we solved that issue uh, with Mike's tank. But again, um, you know, it's one of those things where in Gary's demonstration there, he didn't quite show that one. Now, luckily for Aquarium Currents, they came out with a new product that kind of eliminates that whole thing, which is kind of the C-sweep, which you just take a traditional kind of fixed power head, we'll call it, and you attach it to kind of that oscillating head, and it, that's just sitting down, and it'll sweep back and forth. So you eliminate the kind of supply pump, per se. Um, and we saw that on Mike Paletta's 300-gallon, where, where he put the two C-sweeps on the front of it. And uh, so either way, that's one way of kind of getting around that. And, and keep in mind, with basically this whole entire conversation, it's one of those things where this is one way to solve those problems, right? Now, Gary made the point, and it's, you know, pretty kind of prominent, um, at least in today's world. You can solve those problems with technology, meaning there are controllers out there that will turn pumps on and off to kind of give you that rest. Or, you know, to one of the points that Gary made, you can take and place these power heads in the tanks and you bank them off the sides to kind of, again, um, dilute or basically, you know, take some of the power out of that, um, you know, out of that flow that's coming there. Um, so again, there are solutions to that. The question is, is what cost does, you know, does it come at? And is it the most optimal thing to do? Now, in my particular case, I already have the controllers and things of that nature. So going back to kind of redoing that 110-gallon tank tank, um, you know, my options are kind of wide open there. And I think what I'm actually leaning towards is a combination of the Tunzi, the controllable Tunzis with the C-sweeps. Still kind of contemplating and debating that, but the concept of going that way would like really simplify things. And what we can do is I can take those sweeps and put them on the front, and I can push that flow to the coral, whereas we'll call it with the traditional fixed kind of power heads, you can't do that, right? You just can't have, you know, that magnetic kind of mount sitting on the front of your tank, which is one of those options, again, that I kind of find attractive, but I'm still kind of going back and forth, so don't hold me to that. Now, with that being said, again, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me at AmericanReef at me.com. And as you've heard me say many times, give my sponsors a chance to earn that business, right? They're good guys, honest guys that won't let you fail. That's companies like Bulk Reef Supply, Premium Aquatics, Tunzi, right? Aquarium Currents, Ecosystems, etc. Again, these are companies with a heart and soul that want to help you succeed. I'm Russ Kickle, and thanks for watching this episode of American Reef.